There is a rumble around Macau and is the rumble of GT machinery. The Macau GT Cup is a real thrill around the gear circuit here at Macau. 6.1 kilometers, sunshine, blue skies, and some glorious, glorious machinery all leads us in to our first race of the weekend for the Macau GT Cup and also of course tomorrow the trophy for the FIA GT World Cup that is Raffaele Marciello and he was stunning at the end of qualifying yesterday and very very happy as well took pole position with a time of 2.14 5.42 staying out of the car the beast of a car the yellow and green machine that lines up on pole position. The Mercedes will line up on pole position for race one of the weekend. Lawrence Van Tuert, he's somebody that's won here at Macau in GT machinery. He won in a very strange way. The car ended up on its roof, but still Lawrence Van Tuert took the win and uh, therefore the top step of the podium. I think he was as surprised as any but doing a great job to qualify in fourth place yesterday. That's the car of Mauro Engel. He left it until the end of qualifying yesterday to take third position. He's somebody that uh, has conquered the streets of Macau and comes back year after year. He and Mark Raffaele Marciello were two of the drivers, top world-class drivers that made it to Macau last year for the Macau GT Cup and not necessarily part of the FIA GT World Cup, which we haven't had here at Macau since 2019. It's a very welcome return as Mr. Macau comes up on the front row of the grid. Eduardo Motara in qualifying yesterday took second position with a time of 2.14.758 and now brings his red and gold machine up towards the front row of the grid brings the car into place. It's all the glitz and glamour of the grid ahead of every race that we have here at Macau. And this is racing all the way today as the BMW threads its way through. Two BMWs we have here for Augusto Farfus and for Sheldon van der Linde. Sheldon, who ended up qualifying in fifth position, and Augusto Farfus, who has won this race before, won the FIA GT World Cup and the Macau GT Cup. And he did so in fine style. Let's get down and hear from the drivers with David Addison. And welcome to the grid for the Macau GT Cup, the FIA GT World Cup. And what a grid it is. We've got manufacturer drivers absolutely dripping on this grid. And we've got every previous FIA GT World Cup winner represented here. And one of those drivers is over here. It is Raffaele Marciello. Let me take my camera with me. Uh, because in what's going to be an emotional weekend, Lelo, your farewell with Mercedes. But here you are on pole position. Yesterday, that qualifying, that was extraordinary. And it meant a lot to you. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be on pole in Macau is always is always special. And as my last MG, uh, MG weekend for sure, I, I have the extra motivation. And yeah, let's I mean, let's hope it's going everything well. And yeah, let's see. Now, last year we had that great fight between you and Mauro going to the first corner. Uh, this time it's a different car alongside. It's going to be tough off the start again. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I have uh, both Edo and Mauro in my helmet. So I mean. <laughs> Like they are my teammates, ex teammates uh, during my seven years in MG. So, I mean, I know they are both hard but fair. So, I mean, it will be a nice battle. I don't know Edo how much we'll go for it today because, I mean, we know tomorrow is the is the big one. So, I mean, uh, yeah, like, let's see. Yeah. No, no, good luck. Raffaele Marcello, then we'll start on pole position. Let's go this way and see who else we might be able to grab uh, because Eduardo Mortaro is sitting in the car after. An excellent job yesterday. Let me see if I can quickly invade before we go racing. Oh, no, sorry to interrupt you, but looking forward to this. It's going to be a tough fight, yes? It's going to be very tough, uh, facing some really good guys, tough, tough competition, and we hope that we have a, a good and uh, clean and safe race. It's going to be a really brave run all the way down to Lisboa on that first lap as well. You know this circuit so well, so confident or is that Mercedes going to have a little bit more of an advantage in a straight line? Yeah, we will see. I mean, the start is obviously always uh, a little bit um, a little bit particular, a little bit special here. Um, what will be important is to try to be smart and uh, see what we can do uh, already in the first lap. 
And uh, good luck, Eduardo Mortara, one of those uh, masters of GT racing around here, and also somebody that's won uh, the Grand Prix. Let's go this way, because I want to try and grab, if we can, Lawrence Van Thorp, who is just getting into his car. It's a bit slower than normal, this. You'd have to forgive me, because I have my ankle in a, a, a boot after breaking a bone in it, so it's not quite as rapid as normal. But let's see if we can just quickly ask Lawrence Van Thor about the chances. You've won here before and uh, now in a Porsche, you're upholding Porsche honor. What are the chances of a second win? Uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be able to tell you in about an hour. <laughs> um, it's obviously the goal, but everybody's here for that same goal. It's quite a stacked field with big names. So uh, let's see how the first couple of corners will go. <laughs> it's just so competitive though, isn't it? I mean, it's a quality entry. It must be really good as a driver to have this level of opposition because, you know, to beat these guys, you've got to be really good. Yeah, exactly. And I think the one who comes on top of this race can proudly say he won the, the World Cup. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, like I said, a lot of high names. So expect a tough battle, a lot of egos. So uh, it should be exciting. <laughs> Lawrence, good luck. Good luck to Belgium as well in the World Cup. Right, where else do we go? Let's try Mauro Engel because he's about to jump on board. But the most Australian sounding of German drivers, who is a great character, is about to spin around once he's just uh, spoken to people on the grid. And Mauro, just very quickly before you jump on board. Right, you've won here when it's the Macau GT Cup, you've won when it's the FIA GT Cup. You love this place, yeah? Yeah, absolutely love it. Um, yeah, love coming back. It's an incredible place. Uh, so much fan support. So uh, yeah, it's, it's absolutely great to be here. Right, second row, except that Marcello bloke's ahead of you. What went wrong? Yeah, well, I think we timed it a bit early uh, in our quali run yesterday, but, you know, it's, it's difficult with the red flag. So, nonetheless, we're, we're in the fight, so we're going to try and do what we can. Uh, it's a different team from the ones you drive for in Europe, but it's the same car. Does it make any difference coming to a different team once a year? No, Kraft Bamboo Racing is, is one of our top teams, and I won the race here with them last year. And, uh, you know, so it definitely made sense to come back here with, uh, with, with the same team. Excellent, Mauro. Good luck. We'll leave you to it. Right, the grid is about to be cleared, I think. Let me see whether there's anybody else I can quickly grab uh, before we have to go. There are five minutes to the formation lap. Let's just go that way. L one last car. Let's see if we can grab a BMW word, because we've tried <laughs> some of the other uh, brands. Maybe I could ask Daryl O'Young just very quickly before he walks off the grid. Daryl, uh, you're a winner last week, and here you are with Craft Bamboo, your team, and there could be another win. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're well prepared. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get the right timing for the qualifying to get that pole lap, but I'm, I just, you know, I just hope the guys drive a smart race and get up there and make a couple positions now, and hopefully for the final, we'll be there. Now, on a scale of one to really disappointed, where are you on the not being on this grid scale? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm super disappointed, <laughs> obviously. Very, very, very disappointed. But no, I'm, I'm also really enjoy being on the team side of the things, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really competitive here, all the, all the top teams here, so yeah, really happy to be here and compete. Well done on last week. Good luck for this week. Daryl O. Young then, winner last week of the Greater Bay Area GT Cup. Right, uh, the collection is sounding. We've got, I think, three minutes to go before the formation lap. Uh, that means I'd better shuffle off the grid and get back to the booth. And here on the grid, the build-up continues for the Macau GT Cup. Great work from David Addison down there on the grid. Thank you very much indeed, David. Great to hear from the top drivers uh, ahead of this Macau GT Cup and FIA GT World Cup to look forward to over the course of this weekend as well. Darrow Young is such a superstar in this region of the uh, of the world. He's got his own action figure on sale outside the circuit. Confirmation of the grid with Raffaele Marchiello lining up alongside Eduardo Mortara. There's a few wins apiece between the two of them on the front row of the grid. Lawrence Van Tour and Mauro Engel line up on the next row of the grid. Daniel Juncadella and Sheldon van der Linde line up on the third row of the grid. It's Daniel Serra and Augusta Farpas in the BMW lining up on row four and Old Bamba and Christopher Haza on the next row of the grid. Uh, Matteo Carioli and Alessio Piccarello on the next row of the grid and Kevin Estra and Thomas Preening on the next row of the grid. We have a few more rows and that includes includes the number 33 car of Ye Hong Lee alongside Adelie Fong in the Hello Kitty livery car and uh, that's been selling a few bits of merchandise outside the circuit as well. Jules Gounon yet to find pace over the course of this weekend alongside Frankie Chen on the penultimate row of the grid and on the final row of the grid is the 52 car of Chan Wei An with the Audi Sports uh, uh, boss being uh, on your picture just a couple of moments ago and and the final uh, uh, car on the grid is Marchie Lee in car number 70.
chance to have a look at uh, first of all Eduardo Matara and then Mauro Engel down there on the grid before the door is closed on what will be a very warm office for the next 12 laps around the gear circuit here at Macau beautiful livery on the uh, Porsche as we look inside the cockpit and get ready for the formation lap we go back to number 32 the top qualifying BMW for Sheldon van der Linde Sheldon with a time of 2.15 2.16 yesterday and he's alongside Daniel Giancadella who knows how to win in a single seater and uh, drive GT cars very impressively around the gear circuit here at Macau as well Ferrari is next and the car of Daniel Serra and uh, car number 51 lining up seventh on the grid chance for our camera crew to get right the way down the order because the next car will be the BMW the Rover Racing team entered car of Augusto Farfus who has been a works driver with BMW for many many years both in GT racing and in DTM as well and then we're back to El Bamba lining up ninth on the grid and a quick wave for the camera before the door is closed chance to see Christopher Harza as well so many world-class drivers showing great pace this weekend so far but they have yet to start a race that is coming up in just a couple of moments that car was quick as well Matteo Caroli in the 120 car away for the camera and that car has topped times in free practice over the course of this weekend and so too Alessio Riello, who lines up 12th on the grid row number six the purple car of Kevin Estra that car has been repaired and is ready to go racing for Kevin Estra the number 27 car just a final good luck from the team and then the grid will finally be cleared as the engines fire up and create quite the symphony quite the harmony of glorious different notes for GT cars this is going to be great around the gear circuit 12 laps we have in prospect and the field ready with the eyes of Eduardo Mortara so often a winner here at Macau in single seaters in GTs as well known as Mr Macau he lines up on the outside of the front row of the grid and we've got that onboard camera with Eduardo Mortara and that will be something to savour around the tight and twisty corners of Macau. Raffaele Marciello, the engines far up, he leads off from pole position. You can see the delight in the eyes of Raffaele Marciello after he put in that lap yesterday. And now the important business of getting heat into the tyre starts as soon as they leave the grid, head off on their formation lap for the Macau GT Cup. This is the first race of the weekend, 12 laps today for the qualification race and 16 laps tomorrow for the Macau GT Cup race and the FIA GT World Cup. Right, pick a winner out of this lot. They are incredible world-class drivers in top-class, world-class machinery. And as they make the way around the gear circuit here at Macau, it's almost impossible to work out who is gonna end up on top after this race last year in this race we had a titanic battle at the start of the race side by side with Raffaele Marciello and Mauro Engel both of them in identical machinery the Mercedes AMG such a unique tone to that car as well very low growl to the car a car looks to be an absolute beast and they tame it around the streets of Macau in a way almost impossible of the circuit narrows with the wall on one side and the barrier on the other the run down through melko hairpin almost too tight to get around the hairpin and complete the lap adders has returned to the commentary box well done because can, it, I, can i say out it's it's not easy with the foot and you were going at quite speedy pace as well but it's worth having a sore foot to go and get up close to uh, gt cars i mean honestly I know we keep saying it, it is a mega entry. And you, you look down there and you think, gosh, even on the grid, it's narrow. And yeah. It, yeah. You know, the, the car just exude all of this 
just raw power and they haven't even moved. Um, <laughs> it's quite a great thing down there. Uh, so, yes. Uh, well good. worth it. I, I think so. We've heard from a few of the leading drivers yeah. as well, yeah. so yeah, all good. Um, right, who's going to win? I suppose the, 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 the benchmark is going to be Rafael Marcello, but as he was making the point, tomorrow's the real uh, tough one. That's the one they really want to win. But then again, they are racing drivers, aren't they? Uh, they are, and uh, I asked the question just before you, uh, <coughs> excuse me, arrived. Um, who is going to win? Well, world-class drivers, so many of them, um, it is impossible to pick a winner, isn't it? It's really a question of working out which car you like, which driver you like, and they may win, because there are probably a dozen drivers that could win this race. It's just beautiful to see and hear the machinery, isn't it? There's, there's also a second element to this, which is, if you like, the reverse grid, uh, by which I mean those that have qualified out of position. Jules Gounod, First time here, but he struggled a little bit. Thomas Prining, first time here, has struggled. Kevin Estra, not the first time here. He has struggled. Uh, he's only 13th after a couple of offs. Matteo Cairoli, first time here. He's 11th on the grid. You know, all of those you could anticipate to make progress. And to use this almost boring phrase again now, but it's such a good entry, you can't have all of them in the top six. Something has got to give, I get that. Uh, but there are a lot of drivers that want to, need to, must do, make progress forward. And you said yesterday that every winner of the FIA GT World Cup is on this grid. So that gives you an idea of just what a fantastic lineup we've got here at Macau. They want to come here. And uh, Raffaele Marciello and Mara Engel were two world-class drivers that did arrive here last year, even though it was not uh, the FIA GT World Cup. They still wanted to come, they still competed, and as Morrow said, uh, won here with this team last year. And uh, we've got uh, now the mouth-watering prospect of Mauro Engel and Raffaele Marciello lining up one in front of the other. The R bend is the last corner on the lap. That means as the pace car peels in, the rolling start is ready to go for the Macau GT Cup, the FIA GT World Cup qualification race. We're racing. Good getaway by Marcello. Straight away, he moves across on Montara. Engel goes third at the expense of Bantor. The purple Porsche of Kevin Estra dives down towards Reservoir, eager to make up ground, but Marcello has ticked one off the list. He's got the race lead, but look at Engel and Montara absolutely toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Audi on the inside, Mercedes on the outside. Look back at the traffic down. Jean-Cadea is in a big fight, so is Lawrence Van Thor. And down they come towards the right of Lisboa for the first time. Augusto Farfus right up against the wall. He's the leading BMW going ahead of Daniel Serra's Ferrari, but it's Marcello ahead of Engler, ahead of Montara. Then Jean-Cadea and Van Thor elbowed out wide. He's dropped a couple of races, and Cairoli with a slide just avoids the barrier. How do they all get through Lisboa? Absolutely fantastic. I'll tell you how they do it. They are great drivers. Yeah, true. Absolutely superb driving to get all of these mighty machines through Lisboa, through San Francisco, and all without uh, claiming any scalps on this opening lap. That was breathing stuff, wasn't it? Well, Marcello then now is in the box seat. He leads the way, but Mauro Engel with a yellow flag at turn four. And that's Matteo Cairoli in the wall, the Singtao beer-backed Porsche. I'm afraid the barrel has run dry uh, because it's up against the barrier. So there's a yellow out. I was about to suggest that now that Engel's done one part of his to-do list, he's got himself up in the second place. Now he can go after Marcello, but he can't afford to let Rafael get away. That said, the gap has come down quick enough. You've got two Macau masters in Mercedes, one and two. I said it was a mouthwatering prospect with Engel lining up just oh. behind. And oh no, for the 28 car, this is not good news indeed. And a, a very heavy hit for Thomas Preening and uh, uh, damage to the back, there's damage to the front as well and quite a bit of debris on the circuit, that is not good news. That's the DTM champion and he's really struggled this weekend, I'm afraid. Thomas Priming has never looked comfortable and he looks less comfortable again now. Leaders out of Melko Happy then, Marcello leading in the Landgraf Mercedes ahead of the Craft Bamboo car, safety car deployed, safety car is on track as Marcello leads Engel, leads Mortara and then as they come down towards our bend, the pace of the race will slow this qualification race for the Macau GT Cup, the FIA GT World Cup. One lap will be in the book. It will be a Mercedes 1-2. It is Raffaele Marcello ahead of Mauro Engel. And breathe. Over the line they come, then, in a moment. And they will see the yellow flags. They'll see the boards. Marcello, Engel, Mortara. Juncadea is fourth. Fifth is Farfa. Sixth is Sarah. Seventh is Yelva van der Linde. Van Thor had a bad first lap. He's eighth ahead of Christopher Hauser. Nine, Bell Bamber is tenth. 
you remember last year um, on the opening part of the race when we had Raffaele Marciello uh, 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 versus Mauro Engel? Well, I rather like the idea that Mauro Engel was uh, just lining up behind Raffaele Marciello. Thought he might do that, get the uh, get the best of starts and then get ahead of uh, Mr. Macau, Edo Mortara, as we recover the number 28 car. That's the first lap for Porsche, wasn't it? Two of them gone. Yeah, it's a, a fairly quick job to crane the car out of the way. But, yeah, you're quite right, too. That was a bruising opening lap. And now we've got the prospects of Marciello versus Engel in the same machinery in the AMG. They tend not to call them Mercedes, do they? They tend to call... Uh, notice Raffaele Marciello calling it the AMG. Yeah, M Mercedes AMG is the homologated brand name. But there's quite a lot of talking to do in a GT race, so it does get abbreviated. <laughs> so you're okay, I think, to do that. Um, even if Mauro Engel can't get ahead of Raffaele today, he'll be alongside him on the front row tomorrow. That'll be tantalising enough. And we like the idea. on the road there. Oh, yeah. What's all going on here? A bit of sweeping up to be done. Mm. And uh, under control of the safety car. Got a replay of the start coming up now, so a chance to see that start from Mauro Engel. Here we go. Get the race underway and see Mauro Engel slotted in behind, just goes to the middle of the circuit. Eduardo Mortara still there in second place at this point. It was also a good start from Lons Van Tour. Well, it was, but then he got elbowed back, didn't he, to eight by the end of the lap. And I think for, for Lons, it all sort of went wrong at Lisboa. But there, he's outdragged by Danny Junkadea, so he's fallen to fifth. And look at Farfus up against the wall. So in a minute, you'll see the Rover Racing BMW look right up against the barrier, <laughs> just kicked into the air, but he clears Van Thor as well. And Laurence on the outside here, look, coming into the corner, goes a little bit deep and he came off the power maybe. And that's what enabled Daniel Serra to jump ahead of him. And Sheldon van der Linde got through as well by the end of the lap. So it all unraveled a bit for Laurence Van Thor. Still not really sure how they all managed to get through Lisboa and San Francisco, albeit we had uh, the Porsche of Caroli going off uh, just after San Francisco corner. Uh, but uh, yeah, good to see the restart. Laurence Van Thor was quick off the line, however, then get swallowed up and that's what you get with such mighty machinery all the way around and very limited tarmac available on the opening lap so Raffaele Marchiello leads the race behind the safety car Mauro Engel in the Mercedes in second place then Edo Mortara in third place Daniel Giancadella getting a really good uh, opening lap for sixth place on the grid yeah, and so much of that was on the first couple of corners. Was it? But that's the part of the circuit that those Mercedes love. You know, they just gobble up that really fast section. They've got all the grunt. Uh, other cars work well on other circuits. Uh, and that's why the balance of performance that operates in GT racing is so important because you're trying to balance all of these different elements. Bearing in mind what you've got on this grid, the Audi, 5.2 litre V10. The BMW, 3 litre, 6 cylinder twin turbo. Porsche, Four cylinder six, uh, sorry, four litre six cylinder. The Mercedes 6.3 V8. You know, you've got big and small, you've got turbo, you've got normally aspirated, you've got heavy, you've got light. You've got to try and balance them all so that nobody has a massive advantage. And do you know what that means to me? When you go out to the grandstand, you watch all of these cars together, you get a symphony of noise because they are all different configurations of engine, they all make a different tone. And when you get the two of them, three of them, four of them going through together, it is harmony. It's it beautiful. is. It is. The noise echoes around the streets of Macau with the barriers. They amplify the sound. They echo it back. The walls on one side, the barriers on the other. It is just a glorious noise. Right. So next year, yes. when you're packing your suitcase, yes. can you bring some of your microphones? And on the Friday, Good idea. for free practice, go and stick them out around the circuit. Good and idea. then we can download Macau GT sounds with... 12 different tracks, one per brand, if you like. What a good idea. And I'll buy mine now. Would you? Yes, because yeah, I think that okay. would be a perfect sound. I can do that. Yeah, I can make a top quality yeah. recording of this. Making fortunes and it to people that drive <laughs> Teslas, <laughs> making realize what they missed. So at the moment, Rafael Marcello leads. Mauro Engel is in second place, and Eduardo Mortara is third. It's Danny Jonkadea fourth ahead of Augusto Farfus, and Daniel Serra in sixth place. Got to say, Daniel Serra, as a Macau rookie, has been really impressive yeah. for me this weekend because he's just quietly got on with the job. He's not been a hero, he's just got quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. And one or two of the others, Cairoli and Priming, 
rookies both, they're out on that one. And yet there is Daniel Serra, who has gained places from where he started on the grid anyway. Yeah, doing a really, really good job. I like the idea of this recording, by the way. I'm beginning to think about this. <laughs> leave, leave me on my own for a little while. Did you say it would be popular with Tesla drivers? I, 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 the thought never crossed my mind. I think you did. Uh, there's El Bamba, number 22 in the blue and yellow Porsche. The blue Porsche is Alessio Picariello. The white one is Yi Hong Lee. He's been a winner of this event when it's not run for FIA status. So we've talked about all the FIA GT Cup winners. We've got an extra Macau Cup winner, Leo uh, Yi. And in fact, don't forget Mauro Engel. If you look at wins, he's sort of two plus one. He's got two FIA wins in this and one non-FIA uh, Macau GT Cup win. The fact that they're being ushered to stay on the inside there makes me think it's down at San Francisco where we've lost yeah. Thomas Prime yeah. so very early in yeah. the lap. Yeah, just on the on, on the outside by the barrier yeah. after uh, San Francisco on the run up so San Francisco Hill. Oops, these mighty machines gobble up. They uh, really do make uh, light work of that hill, but it is quite a hill coming out of San Francisco and heading up to the twisty part of the circuit past the hospital on the left hand side into maternity. The right-hander takes them down to the left-hander at uh, Teddy Ip, with the wall on the left-hand side. Into the solitude S's, which is the left and the right and the left and the right. Finishing in Payol, the left and the right, to Faroe Hill. And the pinch points at Police and Moorish. We see touring cars going off at Police and Moorish. Mm. Imagine getting a GT3 car through those corners, because they are very, very tight. I seem to remember one year there was a track blockage at uh, Porsche. Somebody ran wide and there was just nowhere to go. Yes. That said, we had a track blockage in the GT race last week, didn't we, in the Greater Bay Area races. So we're behind the safety car, all of this counting within the allotted time and uh, within the number of laps as Eduardo Montara for absolute racing gets ready to go once more. He and teammate Christopher House have carried the livery of Storm Riders, the famous uh, story, and he is cloud and wind is Christopher Hauser. And have a chance to have a look at the start and the jostling for position as they go down towards Lisboa. Mauro Engel just around the right of the outside of the car that started on the second position on the front row of the grid and a formidable co uh, opponent as well in Edo Motara. Mauro Engel getting the better of that. Great start from Mauro Engel. Edo Motara will not be happy to be down in third place. Watch him on the restart. I noticed a very colourful Audi there with Hello Kitty livery. So at this point, Alan takes centre stage. Uh, celebrating 50 years of Hello Kitty, it is the most amazing brand. If you count up the lines on the cartoon, 14 lines make up Hello Kitty, and it has been the most incredible global phenomenon over 50 years, including the fact we have a little stall outside the Macau Grand Prix selling um, T-shirts, model cars, only available this weekend, of the car that we have for Adley Fong this weekend. And people without tickets to come and see the Macau Grand Prix are travelling here from all over just to get the merchandise. The queue was phenomenal this morning, absolutely phenomenal at 8 o'clock this morning. People on their chairs have been sat there for ages oh. waiting. And, yeah. and it isn't the thing, it's just a brand, isn't it? There's no sort of physical, it's not like a cartoon character, or is it? It's no, uh, as, as far as I know, a cartoon has taken place, but ah. post-event. So right. it started out as a little logo on a purse. At all? Yeah. Gosh. And the, the kitty of Hello Kitty is Kitty White. She's the height of five apples and the weight of three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. She likes baking cookies and playing the piano. She likes music, art and English. Yes, quite right too. And has a boyfriend called, called Daniel. Dear Daniel. Dear Daniel, forgive me. And he's not sure whether he wants to be a cameraman or a ballet dancer. I think our director has had enough of this. I must confess, halfway through, people I was saying I wanted to punch my own face. So you, I, had I'm me at, you had me at five apples. Yes. <laughs> Depends if it's a Granny Smith. Got to give credit to Anthony Fong, though. He's had a lot of coverage, even if he's not been up at the front. He's the driver of that really car. Has. Safety the, car in this lap. Car looks brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, uh, a huge amount of thought goes into all of the liveries by the manufacturers as well for yeah, this yeah. event, because the eyes of the motorsport world are on this event. So, throughout the weekend, not just today, but yesterday for qualifying, the day before for free practice, would you believe people tuning in all around the world to watch uh, free practice, and then tomorrow, of course, for the big one. It is a, a longer race, a 16-lap race in prospect, 
that we have now at the end of this lap four laps complete for our qualification race for the Macau GT Cup and we are soon to get racing back underway so Marcello versus Engel then the rematch from last year and uh, of course although it was a great battle in the equivalent race last season the Macau GT Cup he didn't last long because Raffaele had a mechanical problem and retired, I think, on the opening lap, wasn't it, down at Melco? It was certainly within the first two laps. And uh, here we've got the uh, opportunity to see that battle be renewed. We've also got the likes of Kevin Estra still mired in 14th place, needing to do something there. He is heroic on that restart. Kevin Estra's target is Adelie Fong. There, number 50 is the Hello Kitty Audi. 27 is Kevin Estra behind him. So I think there's going to be an awful lot of drama on, as ever, the run to Lisboa, because this, for some, is the big chance. This is the golden ticket on the restart to gain places. So we have started with 20. We're down to 18. And two that we've lost are Porsches. That's two of the Porsche factory squad in the wall. Yep, not the best of starts by a long way, but Raffaele and Marcello and Mauro Engel from Mercedes doing very nicely indeed. Thank you very much as they head their way around Melco. That's interesting to watch just how much you have to pull the wheel to get around to Melco. Makes it look easy. That is far from easy getting the car around. And then the ultimate focus through the eyes of Edo Mortara. Focusing barely blinks to Edo. As well, Tvanthor getting set to go. He is unique amongst our FIA GT World Cup winners <laughs> for being the only one to do it upside down. Calls the red flag, but one in on the countback. Safety car peels in, and that means we're good to go. Good to go. The safety car peels off into the pit lane under the control now of Raffaele Marchiello, Mauro Engel, Eduardo Mortara. They blast around the final turn to get the race back on the way. Four laps in the book now. How close can Mauro Engel stay to the back of Raffaele Marchiello on the run down towards Mandarin? The ultra fast Mandarin is next. The two Mercedes have already pulled out a little bit of a gap between themselves and Eduardo Mortara, who in turn is having to defend from Daniel Giuncadella, who is in turn defending from the BMW of Augusto Farfus. That's the run down to Mandarin. And this, the all-important run, down towards Lisboa. Mauro Engel, right with Raffaello Marciello, pulls out to the left-hand side. They are oh so close, but they go in single file. And goodness me, that's a, a, was that Augusto Farfus just collecting a little bit of... Daniel Junkadella's car. So Junkadella trying to go around the outside of Mortara, couldn't quite do it, was slow off the corner. Farfus nipped up the inside and just glanced off him. So you had them absolutely side by side into Lisboa. As you were watching the leaders behind for third, they were level as well. And Junkadella made a move and it's not worked and he's come off badly. So Farfus has jumped ahead of him. They wriggle their way downhill. There, 33 is Yi Hong Li. He is making progress as well. But Marcello is not yet getting away from Engel. So the two Mercedes Maestros run as one. Mortara in the Audi third, and then up into fourth place now should be Farfus. He is, remember, he's another winner of the FIA GT World Cup, and he is hunting down the top three. Engel is absolutely shadowing the race leader, Raffaele Marchiello and Mara Engel. There was little to pick between the two of them last year in the uh, final race of the weekend for the GT cars. In the end, I think it was a problem for the car for Raffaele Marchiello. We saw him right, go yeah. straight on at Melko Hairpin, wasn't it? Mara Engel goes through and takes the win. That was last year. It's a new year and a new race. And tomorrow it will be for the FIA GT World Cup. They thread their way down through the Melco hairpin. Danny Junkadea has clearly picked up big damage because he dropped a long way back. There he is mid-pack going around Melco. So Junkadea was certainly roughed up coming out of Lisboa at the start of this lap. So Marcello there did an absolute best sector two and Engel pegs him back with the absolute best in sector three. These two very evenly matched drivers, very successful Mercedes drivers, stalwart ambassadors for the brand. Raffaele Marcello is set to leave Mercedes AMG at the end of the weekend. So very important, very emotional for him that he comes out on top here, but he's not a shoe in. This is Montara's view as they cross the stripe. Best lap of the race to Marcello. He's six tenths of a second to the good. Engel is second, Montara third. You're riding with Mortara out of Reservoir. Farfus fourth, Sarah fifth, Van der Linder is sixth, and it's Van Thor, Hazard, Junkadea, and Al Bamba to round out the top ten. 
there's nothing else to squeeze out of that angle. <laughs> Eduardo Mortara can do nothing more with that loud pedal. Engel closing up again under braking, and Augusto Farfus in fourth. Really good on that section of the circuit, the BMW. He was the same in qualifying yesterday. He's done an absolute best first sector. It's been a slow burner before the BMW in this race over the course of the weekend. In fact, it was a little bit of a slow burner the year that Augusto Farfus won the FIA GT World Cup here at Macau. But when it uh, came to really make a, a move, it was uh, on the Sunday that Augusto Farfus had a very emotional win for the final race, for uh, being in charge of the Schnitzer team for Charlie Lamb. And very sadly, very soon after that, we lost Charlie Lamb. So that memory becomes even more wonderful for the Schnitzer team and for people involved with BMW as well. So there is Mortara hunting down Engel, and Engel is still chipping away to get onto terms to challenge Marcello. So it's three for the lead. For my money on this lap, it's Mortara that's looking the more racy. He is closing, but then he's going to get a bit stuck behind Engel. Farfus. Now look at that. He's taking Daniel Serra with him, and Daniel Serra has not been here before. So the first four are all previous winners, and fifth, fifth is a Macau rookie. Yeah, which is pretty amazing, isn't it? As they thread their way now around uh, the Melco hairpin, barely room to get one of these cars around the hairpin, let alone do it quickly and do it neatly, which is exactly what they need to do in order to set themselves up for the start of the next lap and therefore the run down to Wilfred's boat. The last thing Mauro Engel really needs is, is Eduardo Mortara right there behind him because it means that rather than just think about attacking Raffaele Marciello, he also has to think about defending from Eduardo Mortara, the multiple race winner here at Macau. But I think on this part of the circuit, the Mercedes are going to get away because this is exactly the section that the Mercedes like. It's really frustrating for Mortara. Look, he has dropped back already. That card works well across the mountain part of the circuit, but you can't overtake. Here, where you can, he doesn't have the grunt to stay with the Mercedes. So, again, the importance of qualifying and therefore the importance of being up at the front early on. But now, down to this bow as you look back it's become a mercedes two-way fight again farfus has fallen away a little bit strangely from mortara fifth in the background daniel Serra in the ferrari breaking late sixth is sheldon van der linden also here for the first time and then it's van thor Haza, jukadea and bamba rounding out the top 10. kevin estra update 13. he's got past the anthony fong hello kitty audi and Augusto Farfus is doing what Augusto Farfus has done throughout uh, the two days that we've had up until this point here at Macau. He's got overall best in sector one. He's got some trick, something he does in sector one that makes him absolutely dominant on this first part of the circuit. Augusto Farfus fourth place and overall best in sector one on this lap. Daniel Serra has gone overall best in sector two. The overall best lap is held by the race leader, and that's Raphael Marchero. 17.118 compares to yesterday, the pole time, a 2.14.5. I'm not saying you're wrong about Farfus and having some sort of magic trick, but I think a lot of it does come down to the car, because don't forget, it's a, a three-litre twin-turbo engine, and that really is the ideal part of the circuit, because it's long enough to really fully open the tap, and he's got all of that real estate on which to exploit that. So that's the section of Macau that he's made for that car. Stretch the legs yeah, of the yeah. BMW on the first sector, and Augusto Farfus is some hugely experienced driver. He's been runner-up in DTM for BMW and has claimed all sorts of titles over the course of his long career with the manufacturer. And he's currently in fourth position. Mauro Engel has just got overall best in sector three. So that's one to watch as well for the gap of 0.7 of a second between himself and Raffaele Marciano at the front of the field, as was at the conclusion of the last lap, lap number six. You're on board with Lawrence Van Thorpe and Christopher Hauser behind him. You saw a moment ago in the Audi then as the cars accelerate once more up towards the line. So, Lawrence Van Thorpe ultimate concentration that you need in these cars around the gear circuit there is no room for relaxation at any point around the gear circuit and once again Eduardo Mortara coming into this section looking very pacey indeed in third place look at the background Sheldon van der Linde's BMW was all over Daniel Serra's Ferrari like a rash but he's not quite been able to get up alongside in time and a big big crash for Adelie Fong Adelie Fong is in the wall 
It's goodbye, Kitty, because that, I'm afraid, has done damage to the barrier. There's debris all over the racetrack. We're going to have a safety car. And Adelie Fong's Audi is out of the Macau GT Cup. Safety car is called. And that is a very badly damaged Audi. It was sideways. It hit the wall. And he tried to turn away oh. from the next wall, but he just couldn't. It speared it across the road at huge speed. That is a big accident. And Macau has bitten again. Yeah, it certainly has. And what was a very, very pretty car um, with the Hello Kitty livery is now a, a very, very damaged car. And that is going to require intervention in order to, first of all, make sure that Adley Fong is OK, because that was uh, quite a hit into the barrier. Barrier has been... Uh, oh, he is. He's out the car. That's very, very good news. Makes his way away from the car. So that's the first bit of good news, but look at the barrier. I'm oh, just looking at all the debris. Is yeah. that kitty litter? I, I, I thought of it and decided not to say it. Thank you. Second safety car period of the race then, as the drivers currently work lap number eight. And this might take a little bit of time. Now, bear in mind, this is a 12 lap race. Uh, here it is again. Just lost the back of the car glanced off the wall it's got damage already and look you can see him trying to steer away from the barrier but there's no chance in it goes the good news is that's wrecked itself more than barrier or concrete but even so look at the damage it's like a bomb going off isn't it the car it just is. explodes it is absolutely is and uh, the absorption of energy is so well shown on the slow motion replay and everyone else threading their way through yeah. to try and uh, and um, get past the car and get past the debris as well and that is the key to it now, isn't it? Because there are going to be so many shards of, of, of bodywork on the road. That's a long sweep up to make sure, especially there, that nobody runs over them and picks up any tyre damage. So, yeah, this might take a while. And we're now on lap number nine. So um, don't be surprised if this runs to the end under the safety car. But we know how quickly marshals and recovery crews are here. But that was a big impact. And uh, you made the point. Great to see Adam Fong. Out yeah. Of the car and okay. Yeah, he was uh, probably quite winded after that. He was walking away quite slowly, but he, at least he was walking away because when you see a car hit the barrier, and uh, that's what those rector cells are meant to do, they're meant to yeah, exactly. absorb yeah, yeah. the energy and uh, it basically explode the polystyrene um, or whatever polystyrene type materials inside them. It's what you use for insulation on your house. It's really good. It's, okay. uh, it's really, really oh. light, um, but it makes a heck of a mess when it's distributed all the way over the width of the circuit and the safety car having to thread neatly through and therefore everybody else following the leader as they go through the uh, uh, very, very dirty circuit now. Need a massive Henry Hoover. That's what you need. Yeah, I would not be surprised if this didn't have a red flag race suspension to stop people having to drive through the debris. May not, but it wouldn't be a, a total surprise. Uh, you saw the safety car and it just tipped yeah, through exactly. and just went because yeah. there were sharp bits yeah. and there were the bits of wreck to sell as well. Miroslav Bartos, who is the race director for the FIA GT World Cup, appointed by the FIA, will be looking at it, making a call, and of course they'll be in contact with the safety car crew. The safety car driver, Pedro Cruciero, who used to race many years ago, race suspension has indeed been called, so uh, they will be under red flag conditions. The race will uh, be suspended and then it will resume, time permitting, but it might be quite a while before we can get things uh, back underway. It's just a lot of sweeping and a barrier to be repaired as well. Repaired, replaced, um, so barrier is not something you could just pop back in place like a tyre barrier. It's something that needs to be new Rexacell brought in and uh, secured. Made sort of, it's done its job, it's done a superb job, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it has. It's kept the driver safe, which is the main thing. And OK, it's a damaged car, but it's going to be a damaged car anyway. The main thing is it's absorbed the impact. And that really not be safe, probably a bit winded and bruised, but it's OK to get out of the car. So they will return to the pit lane, and then we will await further news, of course. The timetable has slipped a bit anyway by stoppages in oh, the well, motorbike Grand Prix this morning. This ended up actually starting on time, did it? which right. was pretty good. Yeah, they did a good job. We were at one stage 40 minutes behind today, so a huge amount of time was made up. Yeah, the, uh, the opening of the pit lane for the GT cars was uh, as per schedule. So really good work, and that's um, really a testament to the fact that the touring car drivers uh, behaved very well indeed, and we had no uh, interventions or stoppages during the touring car race which is um, 
A good thing to see here at Macau. So easy to have a, a race that has stoppage or safety car after stoppage and safety car. So uh, good work by the world-class touring car racers that we've got here this weekend. They helped us get back onto schedule. So it'll be a, a gentle in-lap and then the Pirelli technicians will go and make sure that all those tyres are in good order after having to pick their way through the debris. Matteo Braga and his team will descend on the pit lane and have a look at the rubber. But uh, clearly it's going to be a reasonable amount of time to, to sort out the circuit. But uh, a huge impact, so it's good to see that Adelie Fong is OK. Well, it's been dramatic as we expected, hasn't it? Always is. Uh, every race at Macau is dramatic, and when you put dramatic cars on the circuit as well, inevitably you're going to have uh, the potential for uh, accidents over the course of a race. 12 laps today, 16 laps tomorrow. But we've also had drama that didn't end up in a barrier because this battle between Raffaele Marchiello, Mauro Engel, and Eduardo Matara was yet to come to its climax. So we have lost three cars from the original 20. And whether the Hello Kitty Audi can be repaired for tomorrow, I think is a moot point. That was uh, very badly damaged indeed. There are enough Hello Kitty supporters outside the paddock that would have brought them to come and lend a hand. It's really whether you've got the parts. Because, of course, for just about everybody, this is a flyaway, so there's a limit on what you can uh, put on a, on a crate and get here. So the circuit busily being swept. That's by really hand, you can pick up the big bits. By broom, you can get rid of the shards. But it's the barriers where all the senior officials are going because just look how far towards the tarmac they, they have been dragged. So it's going to take a, a while to put those barriers back into position, that's for sure. And... Uh, the FIA officials, the local officials, all toiling away. Yep, there's plenty of them down there as well. And uh, the marshal is doing a great job while the officials are looking at the, uh, the barrier. The marshal is doing a great job of sweeping up as much as they can. One of the things that uh, we've been able to do in the previous years when we have a lengthy stoppage is to uh, hop down to pit lane and uh, chat to some of the drivers and uh, they're able to look back at incidents that have taken place on the big screen at the far end that's something we can potentially think about for tomorrow because uh, it's quite interesting when you've got an incident that's taken place to have the drivers actually talking through the replay of an incident uh, watching the big screen down in pit lane is always quite an interesting insight Something else that they have to do is to remain focused while they're down there in pit lane because they don't know at this stage how long it's going to be before the race gets back underway. And that's uh, Raffaele Marciello keeping focus, remaining in car for now. If they know it's going to be a really lengthy stop, then uh, they will get out the car, chat to each other, maybe get a, a bit of fresh air as much as is available on a warm afternoon here in Macau. 21, 22 degrees this afternoon in the sunshine. It feels an awful lot uh, hotter than that because the sun is a very fierce sun without uh, any cloud in the sky. Blue sky, clear sky. And Lawrence Van Sur getting the chance to have a chat to the team. Raffaele Marciello with the door just ajar, getting a bit of fresh air into the car. But, uh, they seem to deal with temperature in a different way to normal human beings, don't they? Yeah, they, you're right. Yeah. They're sitting there in fireproof overalls, fireproof underwear, helmet, balaclava, um, and in a very, very warm environment, so 50 degrees plus inside these cars, and they just look as if it's um, a normal day. I think it was, I, I want to say Andy Prio, but it might have been somebody else that years ago used to go and try and train in the sauna or would go on an exercise bike, but in helmet and overalls. That's right, with little heaters on. Yes, yeah, simulate yep. all that heat to yep. cope with it in training. They're used to it. Yeah, yep. yeah. And of course, also, many of these guys race in hot countries anyway. Um, we, we tend to think that anything with two digits in it is a high temperature. Yeah, that's true. If you're racing in mainland Europe or in Asia, you do get used to it anyway, I suppose. But that's not to say it's not hot in the car. It's Augusto Farfus for Rover Racing, the BMW. You can see all the cars remaining for the moment under park ferment conditions, so drivers not being allowed out. 
as they are hopefully going to resume the race. It, 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 in theory, it should be that when the race resumes, it will be behind the safety car, and as they leave the pit lane, then the race continues. Races, yeah. yeah, it's not regridded. That's Daniel Sarah. Hat tip to Daniel Sarah. Yeah, yeah. I keep saying it, but I think he's looked really, really impressive, and the, the sensible way that he's gone about it has been very good indeed. He's uh, got on with the job, learnt a bit, pushed a bit more, learnt a bit more, pushed a bit more, and there he is ahead of some big names like a Vanthor, like a Hazel, like a Trucadeo, like a Bamba, like an Estra. You know, he's done all right. <laughs> so many world-class drivers out there here at Macau, and that's going to be very welcome. Bit of air breathed into the car for Sheldon van der Linde. That's Lawrence van Tour in the 99 Porsche. Gorgeous colour, that. It is. It's pretty good and uh, mm. on screen. It looks amazing in real life with the sunshine looking down on it. Yeah, yeah. It does look absolutely stunning right now. Outside the paddock, there is the Spark model shop. Yes. Uh, some of the teams have been really clever and got the models built in advance, but I suspect there'll be a rush on next year when uh, some of these liveries are then on the 143rd models. That's Christopher Hauser. Uh, a fantastic Audi GT driver, Christopher. And there's barely anything he's not won. And that's Danny Junkadea's car. We knew it got roughed up at Lisboa early on. There you can see the damage. That was with Augusto, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, he, yeah, he, he tried to clear it Van Thorpe, but it yes. was Farfus that went up the inside. But, but Augusto went to the right. The damage was on the left, where he ran yeah. deep into the yes. corner and yeah. ran the barrier. That's what delayed him, that gave yeah. Farfus the chance to go through. So the Craft Bamboo team trying to make that car safe. Scrutineers be with it to be uh, prepared for safety purposes. D2 racing Porsche, that's El Bamba. Double Le Mans winner, don't forget. And, uh, although he doesn't always drive Porsches now because he's been with Cadillac in the WEC and he won the Nürburgring 24 for Fricadelli this year. Uh, he is uh, a, a, another very experienced Porsche campaigner, Super Cup champion, Carrera Cup Asia champion. He won the Carrera Cup Asia race here in 2013. And then he went on to sort of global uh, success with uh, Porsche, did Earl uh, with Kiwi. Kevin S has had a pretty tough weekend. And the very smart Cooler Master Purple People Eater Porsche. But the Le Mans class winner, Spa 24 winner, Nürburgring 24 winner, Carrera Cup champion. Still surprised, has had such a tough weekend. It isn't further up the grid. That is the uh, Chinese driver. Yi Hongli, or Liu Yi, former Renault Euro Cup racer, former three driver, and winner this year of the Shanghai Eight Hours, having also won the FIA GT Cup in the past. Now, this was the Junkadea and Mortara moment. Now, look, Junkadea is ahead, but he's on the outside line, and he can't quite make the corner, so look, bang, he skims up against it, and Farfus glances off the other side. But for Junkadea to carry on in the race, having done that, he got away with that remarkably lightly. They have estimated in race control, David, that it will take 10 minutes to complete the repair of the barriers. So right. 10 minutes to until we have the barriers repaired. Do you have any more Hello quick, Kitty facts in 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> you'd like to uh, yeah, they've been selling, um, you say about uh, some of the manufacturers putting together uh, the race car model for this weekend. They have a limited edition, numbered edition, uh, that they've been selling outside, so a little boxed edition of the... This is the Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty car. Car, yeah. right, okay. You bought one? Yes. Yeah, but you might. There is a slightly chewed Ferrari, and uh, that is the car of David Chen, who is the man behind the team, the team being Harmony Racing. That's the 488. Daniel Serra's Ferrari is the newer 296 model, and so there the team and the officials trying to decide whether they can touch the car or not because we are under part fairway conditions replay here does this explain to us how Junkadea and Farfus got together oh, it did that's looking back from Edo Mortara's car it is yeah I mean Augusto Farfus I'm coming through you know <laughs> there was a gap and I'm gonna go for it come what may so the car's in order sitting in the pit lane there is the very popular Machi Lee. Standing next to his car. Number two is Jules Gounon, who, I didn't like it, because he was a bit far back on the grid, I couldn't really get down to talk to him. No. Jules had a tough weekend, I think he would agree. He's been looking forward to coming here, but it's certainly been uh, one of his tougher weekends thus far. It's an eye-opener, isn't it, when you come to yeah, Macau yeah. Yeah. for the first time? And uh, Jules Gounon is one of these world-class drivers that we talk about uh, so often, but uh, yet to really master the gear circuit here at Macau. 
still working on the barrier estimated uh, time was 10 minutes probably about three or four minutes ago is that a big bin liner yes there, but it is yes. isn't it yes well, you need a big bin liner because there are lots of bits you do yes yeah, Jules Grunon has been racing in Europe in, in Fanatec GT. He's been racing in IMSA in America. He's been racing in British GT this year, but first time here. And Jules is one of those rare drivers, if you look at his CV, that's not always been linked to one manufacturer. Some people are signed by a, a, a brand out of single-seater racing, and there they stay. Uh, Jules was the German champion in the ADAC GT Masters for Corvette. The same year he won at Spa for Audi, for Santa Locke. Uh, he's gone on to win at Bathurst for Bentley and in Mercedes as well. Uh, he was part of that Bentley squad. So, you know, now Mercedes, but four different manufacturers. And bear in mind that he came to prominence, first of all, racing Porsches in Carrera Cup France anyway. He is one of, I would offer you, uh, the more versatile drivers in terms of jumping from brand to brand and delivering it all. It's been noted on the screen that teams are allowed to work on the cars. Pretty sure I saw that uh, correctly. Yep, teams are allowed to work on the car when in the fast lane, which is uh, covered by the regulations. So uh, everybody does need the car anticipated before we get this uh, race back on the way. But they are allowed to do it, but the cars are not allowed to do the fast lane at the lane. Lawrence Van Thor staying in the car. Many of the drivers at the front doing so, rather than hopping out and uh, getting some fresh air. But they're staying focused that way while staying in the car. If you get out, there are more people, there are more distractions. That's the thing, there's plenty of distractions. There's a chance to chat to people and take your focus away. Look at the focus on Ed O'Mantara's face. Absolutely pinch on. As, uh, he takes a rare blink in the car. Focus drivers ever you can see the other car is Tara. Something you need around the twists and turns and gear set for the other car. Raffaello Marcello, one of the coolest and calmest characters you could possibly hope to meet, is uh, Raffaello Marcello. Even when you went up to him today and sat down on the grid, happy with that. Yeah, it's also cool, isn't it? It's also calm and relaxed. That's his car. You can't miss it, can you? And a thank you on the side of the car for the service that he's made to Mercedes AMG over the years. Couldn't quite believe it when he said to you down there on the grid, seven years with yeah, I know. AMG. I know. And in those seven years, you know, he's won marquee races every year. Uh, it's been the most remarkable relationship. And you're right, I mean, considering that he is by birth Italian and he is might expect a more volatile character. He's not, he is just remarkably laid back, remarkably calm about it. Not much phases him. Uh, I was telling the story yesterday of when he was in Park Fermi having won, I think it was his fourth race of the year in Fanatec GT with Timor Bogoslowski, and it was Timor, his co-driver, who said that's our fourth win. Is that right? Fourth? And Rafael just said, I don't know. He does shrug. He does, he does, he does, he does shrug. the shrug, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. He's quite a character, is Raffaele Marciano. That's the back of Eduardo Matara's car. Tuned in around the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to, to you, wherever you are. We've got a brief break in the action here at uh, the gear circuit of Macau. The Hello Kitty car, driven by Adley Fong, a heavy accident with the barriers the barriers um, shedding an awful lot of composite over the circuit and uh, so too big bits of bodywork that need to be cleared up and the barrier needs to be replaced as well that's what they're doing probably about five minutes left for the um, for the repair to the bodywork bit of highlights of the race so far and there have been plenty of highlights to enjoy Liz Boa not surprisingly has given us plenty of it that's Jan Danny Juncadella into the barrier on the exit of Liz Boa and on the right hand side Augusto Farfus just a little brush I think that was a wing mirror that we saw flying off as well <laughs> whatever it was it was expensive it, it was it, every, every, every part of them is expensive and uh, yeah, Augusto Farfus lucky to get away with minimal damage to that car as well. 
The BMW's going well in fourth place. And that was Adley Fong's big lose coming out of Mandarin and kaboom. That is a huge impact. But, 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 full credit to Macau for moving with the times and putting the right to sell barriers yeah. there because in the olden days that could have been far more serious. Absolutely could. It uh, looks even more spectacular with bits of the barrier flying all over the circuit and uh, fair play to everybody that was following to maybe their tyres aren't quite in perfect shape picking up a bit of debris but avoiding the car yeah. that could have been so much worse yeah i mean we've seen incidents there in the past haven't we where drivers almost panic yeah, yeah. And, and hit the brakes or slither in or then get hit by and the accident gets worse and worse so yeah they did a, a good job by uh, circumnavigating the imploding audi and the road not quite clear yet although the barriers are nearly done uh, we've still got a lot more sweeping. There's a bit more look further down the road because those bits of car have gone everywhere. Uh, six minutes, five minutes now, rather, we are behind the uh, safety car restart. That's not bad, is it? If you bear in mind uh, just the extent of the damage down there. And uh, a week ago here at Macau, we had umbrellas up for rain. Here, and uh, <laughs> it was unseasonal rain that we had at Macau last weekend for the first weekend. Now they are up shielding from the sunshine, the blaring sunshine which uh, beats down on the absolutely jam-packed uh, grandstands around the circuit here at Macau. Not only to enjoy all the action, the saloon car action that we've had so far today, the motorcycle action first thing this morning. It saw Peter Hickman take a dominant win here at Macau first thing this morning. But uh, also, we've got uh, to look forward to our qualification race over 10 laps for the Formula 3 Macau Grand Prix, the 70th Macau Grand Prix and the 40th year we've had Formula 3 cars uh, taking the star role for the Macau Grand Prix. So there is Raffaele Marcello, the race leader. Uh, and remember that they don't grid up, it's not a two-part race. The race, although stopped, is suspended and then it will resume rather than restart, if you like. So the cars are under red flag conditions, but then they will resume in due course. And this means that the barriers of the track can be made safe without the cars driving round and round and round, and the race just expiring. So this way, they do get uh, some mileage in. So we have three laps to go. So assuming it's just a one lap safety car restart, it's gonna give us two laps of racing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? A mouth-watering prospect of these cars and these drivers. Sprint racing around the gear circuit here at Macau over two laps. Mario Engel with the very spectacularly coloured uh, SJM Theodore uh, racing Mercedes that is uh, run by Craft Bamboo Racing. It's always a delight to talk to Mario Engel. Uh, not only because he's a very accomplished GT driver, but I always feel as though I'm in Australia. He spent time <laughs> racing uh, with Mercedes and Erebus in the Supercars Championship. And although he wasn't there for that many years, he's never got rid of the Aussie twang. It's, it's, great. A, it's, it's a great accent. You can't quite work out where he's from. If you didn't know anything about him, you wouldn't be able to work yeah. it out. Yeah. You absolutely would not. But he's a, a, a good guy, a great character, and uh, I'm glad you got to catch <laughs> up with him. He heard your voice behind him and swung round, didn't he? Yeah. Straight away, he was having a conversation. But, uh, yeah, good to hear from Mara Engel. So we're getting close. Raffaele Marciello, the, in fact, the top drivers have not got out of the cars. And they have stayed focused in the zone. Every single centimetre around this circuit requires ultimate concentration. And this is the opportunity that they could potentially get to be distracted and that's uh, not what they need at this point stay in the car stay focused and just do whatever you're instructed by race control for the restart they have no control i don't know how long they can be down there no, but for Raffaele Marcello, he knows that he is still in a very strong position because it will be a single file restart. So Mario Engel's got to get up alongside him uh, to think about attacking, and he's also therefore got to absolutely match Raffaele Marcello's uh, restart. Raffaele will be able to control that, see if he can jump ahead. Eduardo Mortara is good to go. He is the man in third place. One of the drivers, and there are very, very few of them, but uh, he is one that has a waxwork in the museum because he's a Macau Grand Prix winner. He is a uh, winner of this race four times. 
and in one minute's time the pit lane will open. So now, if you're not in the car, you need to be. Engines will fire, and the uh, process of, of firing up a GT3 car will go through. And start cycle, pit lane being cleared of any extraneous personnel. Good through the corners, but a bit breathless, one fears, against the Mercedes in a straight line. And the problem is, there really isn't space to do no. any overtaking one of these cars over the part of the circuit that the Audi seems to be absolutely perfect around. And in fairness, I mean, proof of, of how it's a little bit out of puff on the exit of Mandarin was that Junkadeo was able to get ahead on yes. the outside. Okay, yeah. it didn't ultimately work, but it does show where the strength of the Mercedes and the BMW is. So pit lane is back open, and this means that the Macau GT Cup qualification race for the FIA GT World Cup is back underway. Race is back on. It certainly is. They fired out behind the safety car down from the hot lane in pit lane. And uh, hot lane being the applicable word this afternoon. It's a hot day here at Macau. See the heat haze down there as you look back from the safety car. Everybody weaving the cars as much as they can to get tyre temperature back up, back up to where it was before the safety car came out and then the red flag came out in turn as well. So as much weaving as you could possibly do on this wide part of the circuit early on on, on, the, uh, on the lap, do as much of it as you can now because once you get onto the hill section of the circuit, it's not really possible. Maybe no, exactly. a wiggle or two past the incident zone and the safety car holds the race back on the way down to the right hand of this boa that amazing overtaking opportunity if you could uh, put down all the angles that you require for the most uh, amazing overtaking opportunity at the end of a long straight you would probably come up with something like this boa because it is the ultimate test the ultimate overtaking opportunity on the gear circuit here at Macau. It's the BMW, the 32 BMW that is, of Sheldon van der Linde. Two of them there are. And uh, Augusto Farmers in the second of the BMWs, and that's uh, just on screen. The Rover Racing into the BMW. Bamba, Alessio Piccarello and Kevin Estrup, of those uh, stars. At the end of this lap, maybe we will be good to go. It might be that they give it two laps because the second one will get the tyres up to temperature and then it's a one lap shootout. But it'll be interesting to see what the uh, outcome now is from race control. One lap is fairly dramatic around the gear circuit here at Macau for a restart. Two laps gives us double the fun for the remainder of this uh, Macau GT Cup race, the qualification race today. 12 laps in total, and tomorrow uh, uh, we have the prospect of 16 laps around the gear circuit under the control of Raffaele Marciello. Pole position yesterday, leading the race today. The beast of Mauro Engel directly behind, and then Eduardo Motara just behind in turn. The safety car peels off into pit lane. Very soon, we're going to be back under full race speed, and Raffaele Marciello pulls the pin. 
Two laps to go then. We're back racing. Green flag waved on the start line. Marcello, Engel, Mortara, Farfus. The top four. Two lap shootout to determine the result of this race and the grid for the main race tomorrow. And Raffaele Marcello was nearly half a second up when they crossed the line. Engel is in the wheel track there. Trying to stay with him on the run down towards Madrid. Look at Farfus. He goes one side of Mortara. Jinx back in behind him, but he's building up maybe for a move under braking. Engel is staying on the tail of Raffaele Marcello for the lead as well. And Van der Linde comes up to have a go at Daniel Serra. The two leading Mercedes are almost together. Engel closing up under braking. It is game on. It certainly is game on. The two AMG right at the front of the field around the right-hander of San Francisco. Up San Francisco. Hill they go. Mortara a little bit further back, but as we've already said, the Audi is pretty good around this twisty pass. This is slightly different, though, because he's got the BMW of Augusto Farfus right there behind him. He, in turn, is a winner of the FIA World GT Cup here at Macau. And uh, we have got this battle on for the lead. We have got the battle on for third place as well, because the BMW potentially could get the better of Eduardo Motara over two laps. We shall wait and see. So you're looking back from Mortara's Audi at this part of the circuit. The Audi is stronger than the BMW. It's able to be a bit more nimble, threading its way between the barriers. And as the race leader, Raffaele Marcello, tries to shake off Mauro Engel, he drops down towards police with Engel inching up under braking. Mortara staying with him on this part of the racetrack, though. Yep, so Mauro Engel is in second place. He needs to look at his mirrors as well, because as uh, predicted on this part of the circuit, the Audi very good at the hands of Eduardo Mortara. So Mortara is close on the back of Mar Engel around Donna Maria. The left-hander, it closes on the exit of the corner. The barrier kind of lures you in as they run now down towards the Melco hairpin. Raffaele Marciello turning the lock on the car. So too at Mar Engel. Now the circuit opens up. They can really let these cars stretch their legs as they go down through Black Sands, down towards Fisherman's Bend. The conclusion of the lap will come at our bend and the final lap is about to be started for the Macau GT Cup. So the last lap board is made ready. Eduardo Mortara looks at those two Mercedes tantalizingly close up the road, but they're going to get smaller in a moment because this is Mercedes country, isn't it? As they come booming over the line then, past the pits, Marcello to Engel is eight tenths, and then a further eight tenths back just under is Mortara in third place. But you're riding with him, heading towards 245 kilometers an hour through Reservoir. BMW's at fourth and fifth. Van der Linde has got past Daniel Serra, then he's moved himself into fifth spot. It's going to be a really tasty grid for tomorrow's race with Van for having gone backwards for seventh, Christopher Haas at eighth, Junker Dea ninth, and the top ten completed by Earl Bamber to Lisboa for the last time they come. Move from one side of the road to the other. Alessio Piccariello has a look at the inside of Earl Bamber. Porsche stable mates, but Piccariello Absolutely determined to find a way past. Couldn't do it, contact just avoided. Almost couldn't look for a moment. We've lost a few Porsches during this race. We can't afford to lose any more. And uh, good news that they both got through in single file. In fact, everybody has done down at this bowl, San Francisco. And now the run up through the twisty section, round through Teddy Ip, the left-hander, and then onto the Solitude S's. The change of direction is constant. It's one one side to the other side and back again as they thread their way around with the barriers and the walls either side of this twisty hill section on the gear circuit here at Macau. The race leader, Raffaele Marciello, an advantage at the end of the last lap, 0.8 of a second over stablemate uh, Mauro Engel, and then Eduardo Mortara in third, Augusto Farfus in fourth. Half a lap to go then as the cars work their way in the fourth sector on towards Malco. Now you've got Van Thor here chasing after Daniel Serra. He wants his sixth place back. And remember, of course, Lawrence Van Thor was fourth on the grid. So it's not going to a great race for him. He'll be very frustrated about all of that. Second gear becomes third and then down, down, down to first gear. You virtually come to a stop. Lots of lot to get it around the hairpin and then fire it out the other side. Kevin Astor almost tickling the tail of the blue Porsche of Alessio Piccariello. Checkered flag at the ready then. It's going to be a win in the qualification race for the Macau GT Cup. The FIA GT World Cup for Raffaele Marcello. Another dominant display on the streets of Macau. Uh, Raffaele Marcello, 100% so far this weekend. He took pole in qualifying yesterday. He takes the first race win for the qualification race for tomorrow's Macau GT Cup, the FIA GT World Cup tomorrow here around the streets of Macau. And quite right too, the team celebrating down in pit lane. Raffaele Marciello has not put a wheel wrong. Now, 
Mara Engel got a really good start, got himself up into second place, and that means that tomorrow, the two Mercedes will line up on the front row of the grid. And where do we remember that from? About 12 months ago. And it got us absolutely enthralled watching the pair of them go toe to toe. So the rematch coming up tomorrow is going to be worth watching for certain. Woohoo! Last lap of the race, Eduardo Mortara did an absolute best sector. So he might have been frustrated, but he never gave up trying, did he? Uh, Farfus fourth, Vanderlinde fifth, Sarah sixth, top ten rounded out by Banfour, Hazard, Drukadea, and Bamba. Well, it's a shame we had the stoppage, but great racing, great drama, great action, and a superb drive by Rafael Marchella. And proof uh, that when you get going after the tyres have lost temperature, you can get the tyres up to temperature, you can be careful on that opening lap, and you can get away without having yet another incident. We've seen it a, a few times over the uh, last couple of weekends when we've uh, had a restart and the tyres have cooled down, and as a result of that, we are... Uh, unfortunately going from stoppage to stoppage but uh, when you've got these drivers with this amount of experience they're able to really make the most of this not sure we're going to get a chance to get down and get a, a word with the drivers are you going to go down david and uh, maybe get a chance i, I, to I wasn't planning on because no. i was expecting really they'd get quickly whisked yeah. away up to um, i think they will be up yeah. to, the, to the podium might try it tomorrow yes Let's see try and tee it up tomorrow but We'll certainly do the grid tomorrow. I think um, pretty much the way the time they do, the drivers at the end of the race get whisked off yeah. as soon as they've done their technical checks to go and do the podium, the official parts first, and then they go to the press conference in due course as well after the podium. So press conferences are taking place around today. Rapielli Marchiello, the victor, makes his way down from the Melco Airpit. Mauro Engel in second place, Eduardo Mortara in third place. That's your podium for our qualification race for the Macau GT Cup and the victorious Raffaele Marciello. Now I don't think he's going to be as joyful about the race win as he was about qualifying yesterday because he left it right until the end but it was just in the end a, a two-lap sprint wasn't it for Raffaele yeah. Marciello and uh, he will come down into pit lane, peel off into pit lane, save the celebrations for tomorrow maybe. Much more at stake the title of the winner of the 2023 Macau GT Cup, and at the same time, the FIA GT World Cup that will come tomorrow. Well, certainly, a marker has been laid down, even if it hadn't been qualified by Mercedes. Uh, of course, the grid was Mercedes Audi, but the result of the race, Mercedes, Mercedes, uh, and uh interesting isn't it that after that you have to get quite a long way down to find the Mercedes ninth so there's an interesting mix of, of brands across the top 10 but the top two Mercedes AMG Raffaele Marcello, Mauro Engel, Eduardo Montara will be the three winners but uh, we have on the podium so Grazie Lello it says on the bonnet of the car now Raffaele Marcello race winner again here at Macau squeezes himself out of the Mercedes. I'd love to know who organises parking here, Park Fermé area. It's the same in every championship. There is never enough room same to person, open a door. Same person that marked out the parking spaces for my local Tesco, I reckon. <laughs> so, when you're very tall like uh, Raffaele is anyway, it's not the work of a moment. Mauro Engel gets out of the uh, Mercedes, and then Eduardo Mortara will hop out the other side of the Audi. But uh, two Mercedes drivers Congratulate one another. Landgraf Racing ahead of Craft Bamboo Racing, the local team running this car for Mauro Engel. Lauren Granville from SRO handing over the Pirelli caps because although it's a Macau race and it's an FIA badge, SRO Motorsports Group is uh, given the job of, of putting the grid together and handling all the infrastructure and all the entries and making it all possible. So uh, it's the uh, statue that SRO has that, uh, again, it's been asked to put this race together for Macau and the FIA. Yeah. Watch it on. So the team offering to take the crash helmet for Mara so he can get to the podium unencumbered. So there, Eduardo Mortara. 
Ja. And uh, the FIA officials stand by as well, but Eduardo Mortara in a moment will make his way up to the podium. Whether he's a little bit concerned about something, which is why he's still to be found with the car. Anyway, let's have a look at the results of the qualifying race for the Macau GT Cup, the FIA GT World Cup, and it is uh, a win for Raffaele Marcello. The winning margin just over a second in the end, 11 tenths uh, from Mauro Engel and Eduardo Mortara in third spot. Fourth, Augusto Farfus, Sheldon van der Linde in fifth. Daniel Serra taking sixth. Seventh was Lawrence Van Thor ahead of Christopher Hauser, and then Danny Jean Cadea with Earl Bamba in tenth place. So there is the hero of the hour, Raffaele Marcello, who has now taken on Swiss citizenship, the Italian driver, so the Swiss flag proudly represented with him. Eleventh uh, place went to Alessio Picariello, twelfth in the end, Kevin Est, who did make a bit of progress, but uh, a tough race again for him. Fourteenth behind Leo Yi was Frankie Cheng, fifteenth was David Chen, and then Jules Gounon ahead of Marchi Lee, and we lost so spectacularly at Big Bong. And on the first lap, and possibly connected, we never really got to the bottom of it, Matteo Cairoli, uh, and uh, we also lost, of course, Thomas Priming, but they were together on the grid, and I just wonder whether they may have come up against each other out of Lisboa and towards San Francisco. We'd see Matteo Cairoli run wide at that part of the circuit. And, uh, and then uh, a couple of quarters later, we saw him up against the wall. So the drivers go to the podium. Here is uh, Morelli. Matteo Braga handing over a winner's trophy for Raffaele Marcello, the man that took pole position yesterday and uh, taking the Pirelli Trophy here as well. Smiles all round. So the podium awaits as the uh, winning drivers are being briskly marched in that direction. The uh, doors at the front of the podium on one side open to allow the Macau podium organisers to step forward. Then on the other side, the doors open to allow the trophy girls out, then the dignitaries to call forward, and then the drivers to call forward. So there is a process, and the process has started, so it won't be long before we have uh, drivers on the podium. And uh, then shortly, we will have our final race of the day here, which will be for the FIA Formula 3 World Cup, the Formula 3 Macau Grand Prix qualifying race. shortly, as I say, the drivers for the podium uh, will be there. So Formula 3 cars back at Macau, they will round out the day. But the GT race tomorrow, of course, the main race, will be that little bit longer, 16 laps. I suppose one question is whether or not we're going to see the Hello Kitty uh, out once again. Darrell Young there in the middle, winner of the Greater Bay Area GT3 race last weekend. Uh, and uh, racing team. Darrell, the very popular guy in this part of the world, the Canadian Hong Kong driver, go outside to these merchants of our stores we've been talking about. He's finally not only merchandise and models in his car, you can buy a little Darrell O'Young statue as well, a figurine of the driver that's also had a really good strike rate at Macau, be it in GT or in touring cars over the years. There is the podium at the front of the Macau Grand Prix building, which houses the offices and the staff that work. 12 months of the year around to make sure the circuit is safe, the entry together, uh, all the races invitational, so you know, at uh, no point can a guaranteed entry into the car, is uh, quite a thing with the late 26 starters allowed for the race, uh, always there is great interest and desire to be on that road. The last few years all the races have been for predominantly the uh, local drivers from this region, this has a far more international deal to it than a really feel-good factor as well. It's Throw open its doors and welcome visitors from around the world. So there, in a moment, we will have the uh, podium ceremony good to go. And uh, as the dignitaries are amassing behind the podium, 
the uh, piloto uh, neerlandês uh, que nos segundo posição neste uh, top uh, three drivers uh, 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 a uh, the qualification race for the FIA GT World Cup the Macau GT Cup that result is tomorrow's grid tomorrow's race is the one that they're all so so keen to win it's going to be absolutely fantastic it will start tomorrow at five minutes past 12 local time and after that there is the build up for the mechanical for yourself from Fernando Savici of SRO who has helped put together this grid and uh, made the race possible standing in front of the podium ready to cheer the drivers in, in a moment with everybody else once they are called forward uh, a very, very strong 20-car grid that we have enjoyed for the first of the two races. So the trophy girls come to the podium, and that means that in a moment or two, so too will the dignitaries be ready, and drivers can see them behind the podium, the bright yellow canary, yellow, yellow overalls of Rafael March yellow means that we're almost ready to go at the uh, conclusion of the first GT race of the weekend for the qualification race for the Macau GT Cup. To the 70th Macau Grand Prix. Now it's the Macau GT Cup FIA GT World Cup qualification race trophy presentation ceremony. First of all, let's welcome the top three finishers to the podium. On second runner up, number 40, Eduardo Motara. <laughs> welcome driver. On first runner-up, number 77, Mauro Engel. And the winner is number 48, Rafael Marchero. Welcome the top three winners. And now I would like to invite Ms. Irene Wong, Senior Vice President of Public and Community Relations of MGM, to present the laurel and trophy to the second runner-up. And our second runner-up driver is Motara. Congratulations. And now I would like to invite Ms. Wong, please also present the laurel and trophy to our first runner-up, Mauro Engel. Congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Wong. Now I would like to invite Mr. Poon Wang Kun, President of the Sports Bureau and Coordinator of the Macau Grand Prix Organizing Committee, to present the laurel and trophy to the winner, number 48, Marcello. Congratulations. Will all the guests please proceed to the center and take a group photo together? And our winners, you may reach to the top of the podium as well to take this group picture together. Thank you. Yeah, raise up your trophy. Yeah, you may reach to the top of the podium and take one more, please. Thank you, thank you all the guests. Thank you very much. We drive this, please remain on the podium. Please remain on the podium for some questions. Thank you, good girls first, thank you. And now I will pass the time to Chris for some questions to our drivers, please. Thanks very much. Let's catch up with uh, our top three. We'll start with uh, Eduardo Matara. Eduardo, uh, well done. Nobody knows this place better than you. Four wins in GTs, a winner twice in Formula 3. Can you describe to us what this place means to you, what this track is like to drive? Uh, Macau is a very unique uh, racing track where um, as driver, you know, you have uh, a lot of fun. Driving it, uh, I had a lot of pleasure, you know, these, during, uh, these, these two days, driving my uh, Audi R8 uh, around this track. Unfortunately, today we, yeah, we could not uh, really, um, you know, get the, the, the first positions, but uh, we still have tomorrow, and we will try even harder. Do you know where you might be missing out, where you can find a little bit more pace to, to keep up with? They were, uh, yeah, they were really quick today. I'm sure that we will uh, sit, sat down, you know, with the, sit down with the engineers, try to look uh, where we can, uh, you know, have some... Uh, uh, you know, have some a uh, little bit more pace, and hopefully we can uh, challenge them uh, a little bit more uh, tomorrow. Well done, Edward. I could speak to you. Uh, right, second place, uh, Maro Engel. Maro, um, it's a long time ago, but if you can remember it, please, can you talk me through that start for second place? That was phenomenal around the outside at turn two. 
Yeah, it's always uh, it's always it's always a tough uh, tough and uh, exciting start here. Obviously, already turn one. Uh, managed to get a good run on uh, on Edo there, and uh, we're side drafting on the way to turn two, and uh, I was just a bit ahead, so, so it was enough to, to stick it around the outside. I mean, um, was uh, was uh, definitely uh, always a heart and mouth moment, but uh, but yeah, it uh, went well, and obviously a good uh, good move to to get up one position, and uh, hopefully we can uh, move move up one more position tomorrow. And what a field of drivers to be amongst uh, twenty unbelievable drivers this uh, this weekend. It's really tough out there. Yeah, the field's incredible, and um, you know, if everyone in in this field is uh, is, is uh, won championships, has has won uh, at the highest level, so it's it's really a strong field, and uh, obviously uh, really challenging. What well a Mara! Good luck, Kurt. Good luck to you tomorrow. Edge past you. This is shaky. I made it. Raffaello, uh, what a wonderful five years you've had with Mercedes. You've won everything there is to win. Feels a bit like it may, might be written in the stars this weekend to end on a real high. You've had a fantastic. To seven years, not five, so <laughs> I'm getting old. But I mean, uh, yeah, I had uh, an amazing seven years with them. We won almost everything. So I mean, I cannot, I cannot complain. And yeah, for sure, I will try to to end my life in MG tomorrow with uh, yeah, with a victory for sure. What does this place mean to you, Macau? Is it good to be uh, back after after four years away? I was there uh, last year already, so I mean, uh, me, Edo, and Maru, we were there uh, together last year, so it was, it was different without the people, and, and I mean, uh, this year, uh, it's nice to be back with the FIAT GT World Cup, there are many strong cars, so it's, uh, it's, it's fantastic, and if I can win, it's even better, if I cannot win, I will not like any more this place. So. Well, well done today, great drive, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Well done to our top three, give them a round of applause, and we'll see them all again for the main race tomorrow. And that top three is Eduardo Mortara, third, Mario Engel, second, Raffaele Marcello in the yellow overalls in the middle. Yet another victory in a Mercedes, yet another victory at uh, Macau and uh, great racing that we've had. And we look forward to more because there is a longer race tomorrow for the FIA GT World Cup. The drivers will make their way off the podium and to the press conference. Mario Engel celebrating uh, in style and we'll have a look at the highlights of the qualifying race here at Macau.